2003, HBO celebrates 30 years of boxing coverage, building legends one round at a time. Tonight, Boxing After Dark brings you two fascinating matchups from Foxwoods Resort and Casino in Mashantucket, Connecticut. First up, light heavyweights Antonio Tarver and Montel Griffin face off for some of the light heavyweight turf recently vacated by Roy Jones. Then in our main event, cruiserweight champion Vasily Giroff puts that title on the line against rejuvenated one-time superstar James Toney. After Roy Jones' successful foray into the heavyweight division, the 175-pound class is wide open. Tonight, Antonio Tarver looks to lay claim to the division spotlight while grabbing two title belts in the process. Former title holder Montel Griffin stands in his way. Then in the main event, the long-overlooked cruiserweight division steps out of the shadows with a terrific matchup pitting champion Vasily Giroff, a vicious body puncher from Kazakhstan, against one of the sport's best counterpunchers, James Toney. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. We welcome you to this exceptional night of matchups on HBO's Boxing After Dark. The second of our fights, the main event between Giroff and Tony, could be an early candidate for fight of the year, matching as it does two styles that should provide a high-action offensive fight. We're working tonight without our beloved HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant, who's in Ann Arbor, Michigan, for the graduation of his daughter Julie from the University of Michigan. Congratulations, Julie, from all of us. Congratulations, Dad. We're thinking of you as well. Working with me, as always, on Boxing After Dark, the legendary trainer-manager, Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel, later tonight, the cruiserweight title fight between Tony and Giroff is called the biggest fight in the history of the cruiserweight division. That's a little bit like saying it's the best dance club in Fresno, but how big a fight is it in the overall scheme of things? Well, it's not too difficult to be the biggest fight in the cruiserweight division because there hasn't been that many significant fights, period, in the history of the division. But I think tonight is going to be very important based on the fact that the winner of this fight would be in a great position to get set up to possibly fight Roy Jones when he starts defending this title against the smaller heavyweights. And also, I think it's going to be an exceptionally good fight because both guys are what I call pace setters. Giroff comes out. He doesn't wait till another person sets the tempo. He sets his own tempo. And also, James Tony does the same thing. So it should be a very exciting fight. All right. But first, the light heavyweight title fight between Antonio Tarver and Montel Griffin. And let's skip the on-camera part here and go ahead and set it up because the two fighters are already in the ring. So quickly, let's take a look at the tail of the tape now between Antonio Tarver and Montel Griffin. You can see that Tarver, who didn't yeah. turn pro until 28, is a relatively young 34, thinks he could fight for another five years. Griffin, the younger, but by far the more used up of the two fighters. Griffin gives up seven inches in height. They both weighed in at 175, and you can see that Griffin has put on more weight in the 27-hour interim. A four-and-a-half-inch reach advantage for Tarver, a one-and-a-half-inch arm length advantage. Once again, reach is measured all the way across the back from fingertip to fingertip, and arm length is measured from the underarm mm -hmm. out to the end of the fist. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Antonio Tava Montel Griffin fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see in your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges are going to use to score each individual round clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean punching. Jim. All right, thanks, Harold. The favorite in the fight is Tarver. Let's take a look, a closer look, at the underdog, but the veteran of the two, Montel Griffin. Griffin who says that he has spent six years in hell since the August 7 knockout at the hands of Roy Jones here in 1997 in this building that derailed his career, Jones getting revenge for his DQ loss to Griffin. Griffin says, I'm a slick boxer. That's not likely to change tonight. Defense is his great forte. Roy Jones has called Montel Griffin on his cell phone to tell him that if he can win this fight, he'll get in line for a third shot at Jones. Meanwhile, across the ring, Antonio Tarver has been outside of Jones, the hottest fighter in the light heavyweight division in recent years. A rising tide with four straight wins, including the five-round revenge destruction of Eric Harding that put him in position to begin calling out Jones for a title shot. A long, strong southpaw, unlike most of the physical specimens you see in the upper divisions. He has the punching power advantage here. And... Montel Griffin says that he doesn't believe Antonio Tarver is ready for a tough fight. He wants to test Tarver's heart. It might be difficult for Griffin to do it with his style. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer now for the official introductions. 
Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to HBO Boxing After Dark. Brought to you tonight by DeBella Entertainment in association with Foxwoods Resort and Casino of Mashantucket, Connecticut. Along with Perfect Ten Magazine, The King of Beers, Budweiser, and Goose and Tudor Promotions. All the contests are sanctioned by the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Nation Athletic Commission, Chairman Joey Carter, Vice Chairman Richard Butler. The three judges for this contest will be Steve Epstein, John Lawson, and George Smith. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Michael Ortega. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing. This is for the vacant IBF WBC Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing green trimmed with gold and officially weighing 175 pounds. His professional record, 44 victories, including 29 knockouts with only three defeats and one world title. From Las Vegas, Nevada, the former light heavyweight world champion, Montel Ice Griffin. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, Wearing the silver gray trimmed with red, his official weight also at 175 pounds. He has a professional record consisting of 20 victories, including 17 knockouts with only one defeat. Fighting out of Orlando, Florida, he's the number one ranked light heavyweight contender in the world, Antonio the Magic Man Perver. on my toe. Okay, gentlemen, we went over the rules on a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. The trunks are high right here, okay? Right here and up is good. Okay, okay? Touch them up. Best of luck to both of you. You saw the height disadvantage Griffin is facing. Yesterday he said to us, height doesn't matter to me. I've never been taller than anyone I've fought. But it's clear that the style matchup should be intriguing with Tarver's punching power and long arms against Griffin's defensive skills. Manuel Stewart will elaborate that as soon as the bell rings for round number one. Referee Michael Ortega wiping a wet spot from Griffin's corner. And now the two fighters have waited an unusually long period of time before finally going into action. Manny, what about the style matchup? What kind of fight should it produce? Well, you know, it very easily could end up being a boring fight. If Montel fights his laid-back, counterpunching style of fighting, <laughs> he's already made it clear that he questions the heart of Tava, but it won't be a factor if he doesn't apply pressure. Tarver, for his part, has shaken off the barbs of those who have said that they don't think he's tough. And in order to prove himself, he voluntarily stepped up and took a rematch with Eric Harden when he did, Harding when he didn't really need to do so based on his ranking and made it pay off with a five-round destruction of Harding that really represented, to me, big improvement as a fighter. As big improvement also has been like the highlight of his entire career professionally. Tonight's fight, I think, is going to be a little different than I thought. I think that Griffith is going to be more of a puncher. Normally he doesn't punch as much, but I think tonight he's going to be a little bit more aggressive. His body looks unusually strong for Montel. Deeper chest than, yes. than is normally the case. And he's not going to outbox Tarver. He's going to have to be a little bit more aggressive, a little more physical. Tarver starts out behind the long jab, as you might expect from a fighter of his dimensions. And it seems abundantly clear that Griffin's going to have to get to Tarver's body at some yes, time. Yes, he's going to have to get him. He's trying to concentrate on getting a short right hand through the center. Yeah. 
Griffin's elusiveness can conspire to lower the punch output of opponents. Tarver isn't a guy who fights at an overwhelmingly fast pace anyway. Griffin with a left up and under momentarily shocks Tarver. He got him earlier with a good body punch. It seems to be a lot more explosive punching power than I expected from both guys early. Six years in hell, you saw the graphic. Montel Griffin has won 18 of his 19 fights since the first round destruction against Jones in August 97. And he says, with some accuracy, nobody remembers anything I've done since that fight. All they remember is the video of me getting knocked out by Jones. And I'm one that will admit that too. I don't recall him having any fights other than the last fight that Roy Jones knocked him out in the first round. Big left hand by Tarver. Well, the guy that's shooting power punches, there's not too much it's light punching. Everything is shot with power. Tarver seems to be a little bit short, sharper right now at this stage. Tarver jabbing that's twice, nice. three times, got ready to follow with the left again. Couldn't quite let it go. Griffin usually elusive, although his head was stock still when Tarver landed the left hand before. And now Tarver gets him into the corner. With a left and a right, drops Montel Griffin Ooh. on his knees. Griffin Four. didn't see the punch at all. Five. And he's Montel in, wobbles in front of Ortega. He's in bad hey, shape. Right, give me a glove. Give me a glove. All right? This could okay. be tough. Five. Darver's going to come in and Five. try to finish. Five. And the round comes to a close as Ortega momentarily blocked Darver's back. Yes, he did. Tiny lucky break for Griffin, or so it seemed, at the end of the round. Take a step back. Now take a step with your hands up, okay? Right. Get your legs a little closer. Get your heads a little closer together, okay? Now this round, I want you to box in, box, box in this round. Okay. Give me this round, okay? Yeah. So Griffin has got a very... Don't pull straight back to those shots. The only thing you got, you got is a little straight shot, okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got behind me. That's okay. Put him right on him, Antonio. Don't let him rest. He was out. Okay? Don't let him rest, baby. Relax, it's your night. It's your night. It's over. Your it's night. Over. Let's go, Tim. Quick look at the knockdown, Manny. It basically was a situation where a guy didn't see a punch. He was trying to reorganize himself after missing a punch and got hit. And punches are always effective when you don't see them. Close to a rabbit punch. He caught yes, him on the back of the yes. head. And lost his equilibrium. Round two begins. Griffin has the unfortunate distinction of having been knocked down in each of the past two rounds he's fought in this building. August 7, 97 against Jones, and now this. Go ahead, coming in. So Montel yeah, Griffin yeah. is fighting a mountingly bad history here in yeah. Ledyard, Connecticut. Yes, yes, and he's having problems trying to get inside. He's, and he's, he's pretty much restricted to just trying to land one punch, a right-hand punch. And in the meantime, the distance that Tarver's making him fight at is giving him a lot of problems. Tarver just missed with a big left over the top. Sailed across the top of Griffin's skull. Everything that Griffin does, he has to learn to do it. Griffin's only able to get off. Open. Griffin was only able to get off 19 punches in the first round against 69 for Tarver. And now Tarver catches him with a left hand inside again. Griffin trying to duck out of the way, but he's in the corner. Tarver lands the left again. And again. Griffin taking it well for the moment, but Tarver's just batting him around. Tarver's fighting just right. He's not getting too close where he's smothering his work. He's keeping the fight still at a distance where he can punch, and Griffin has problems of punching back because he's still too far away. Tarver's been amazingly accurate in the first two rounds against Montel Griffin, who is normally difficult to hit, but has been a willing target for Tarver. And Tarver catches him again to the body and the head, and now Griffin with a left off the ropes backs Tarver up. Both of these guys come to fight tonight. Well, who said the fight might be dull, huh? I thought it was going to be dull. <laughs> I'm amazed. I'm amazed at what we're looking at oh, here. Yeah. Action fight. Whoever goes down is going to go down fine, that's for sure. Barber bombing Griffin with the left. And Griffin with a good counter left hook. Griffin on the back of Tarver's head. I think Griffin's legs are still hurt, so he's fighting off of the ropes because he can't fight too good in the center of the ring. But he's doing it very effectively. I'll 
ever forget watching Tommy Morrison go in against a stricken Michael Bent and lose two and a half million dollars in a date with Lennox Lewis on one big punch. That's what a punch you're doing, Boxy. When you have a man in trouble against the ropes, you have to be a little bit wary. Well, Tom is a little bit cautious now because he's got hit with some counter punches as he's been in trying to finish off Griffin. Griffin landed two or three really solid shots off the ropes, even when in trouble. Carver trying to target the left hand through the guard. Griffin makes it out of the round. Big excitement so far here at Foxwoods, watching from 3,300 miles away, all the way across the country in Big Bear, California, Oscar De La Hoya, world 154-pound king, getting ready to fight Yori Boy Campus next Saturday night, and will be talking with us between these two fights tonight. The trademark smile, which is uh, probably the number one sales credential for the sport of boxing, right? Start your shots at the body and bring them back to the head, okay? Start them to the body, but the main thing, when you land on that rope. Now here's Tarver wailing away at Griffin against the ropes, and look for the counter. Boom. Yes. But at all those punches, very seldom did he land a clean punch. And Griffin is fighting more effective now counter punching than leading. Every time he leads, he's having a problem because he's having a lead from such a long distance. Our punch is through round two by CompuBox numbers. Tarver 23 out of 52. Griffin 7 out of 26. Big edge for Tarver. But Griffin made his point in round two with a couple of those counters off the ropes. Yeah, he definitely got attention of Tarver. Now let's see if the pace slows just a little bit in round three. As Tarver has expended a lot of energy in the first two rounds trying to knock Griffin out. More, it looks as though Griffin will have to focus on the body. Yes, but Gri Griffin has problems when he's leading, and the Tava should let him miss and then take advantage of him because seemingly when Tava leads, he doesn't catch Griffin as much as when he makes him come in and miss a punch and takes advantage of him when he's off balance. Well, the advantage Tarver has now is that he has won the first two rounds and with the knockdown probably leads 20 to 17 on all three cards. So if he stays in this position, ultimately he can make Griffin come. To yes, him. yes. Griffin cannot fight effectively at that distance. Body shot, Griffin. One at a time, though, as Griffin is unwilling to try to throw combinations and risk what might be coming back from Tarver. That's correct. Griffin's assertion yesterday as to his own offensive effectiveness in this fight was Tarver's going to make a mistake and walk into something. Certainly that's what Griffin was hoping yeah, that's for what he's hoping for, But right now, I don't think so. Because Tarver's fighting very safety right now. And using his legs. Using his legs. And Griffin seems to be a little bit on the wear and tear side from the years of fighting. He seems to be not as sharp, not as coordinated as Tarver was. 44 wins, 3 losses for Griffin. 29 KOs. Of course, everybody remembers the knockout loss to Roy Jones. He also lost to Eric Harding in 1998. Tom is fighting very good now. He's keeping Griffin at a distance where he can fight, and Griffin is not effective. Hey, step up, clean. Step up. And that's when he should shoot his punch when he counters. He takes a half a step back when Griffith comes in, and then he should let his power shot go. Round three, a tactical round. Tarver taking advantage of his early lead on the scorecards. Next Friday, May 2, tune in for the premiere of On the Record with Bob Costas. For season three, it's all new. New night, new time, Friday at 1130. 
on show one. The stars of Bull Durham come to HBO, though they may not be going to Cooperstown. Friday night, a roundtable discussion on one of the better sports movies ever made as Tim Robbins, Susan Sarandon, Ron Shelton, and Robert Wolf join Bob for the panel canceled by the Hall of Fame. On the Record returns May 2, only on HBO. Head one play, get the head moving, right. and when you get them off, you got to get off two and three shots. You're throwing one shot. All right, okay. And punch off the head moving, baby. Right. That's what. Where, where are we going when we go out here? We going to the body. No, no, okay. to the body. Keep the jab and go to the body. Okay. Easy fight to score so far. CompuBox numbers through round three. Antonio Tarver's already thrown 193 punches. And Montel Griffin has only gotten 74 of them off. Let's see how Harold scored the first three rounds. Okay, Jim. You know, you're right. It is an easy fight to score. 30 to, 20, 30 to 26. Three rounds to nothing. Antonio the Magic Man Tarver. Jim, real quick. You got to give an extra point for the knockdown of round one. Jim, real quick. What, I got to tell you what happened at the end of round one. We heard the 10 second warning from, from timekeeper Lou Dell. At that point, Montel Griffin got knocked down by a left hand. Now, this guy's down about seven or eight seconds. When he got up, it was well past three minutes. When Mike Ortega jumped in the middle, he was looking for Lou Dell to ring that bell, which, which should have sounded. And Thomas still got in a good shot. I don't know why the bell didn't sound. So you're saying Ortega was doing the right thing? Absolutely. You can't let, you know, when the guy gets up, the bell is supposed to ring. There's no question. In other words, as soon as he's ready to box again, the timekeeper has to ring that bell. If three minutes have gone by. All right. Thank you for the clarification. If the score is, in fact, 30 to 26 on other scorecards, the official ones, then that further underlines the point that Griffin isn't going to be able to wait and try to counter all night long. No, he's not. Because Tav is fighting the perfect fight, and everything is moving just the way he wants it to be. Griffin gets a little off balance, extended over Tarver, and Tarver takes advantage to land a chopping left. And another left right across the jaw. And Tarver's utilizing his right jab a lot since the end. He did coming up with power shots with his left. And he's having him preoccupied by just picking him with the jab, 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 and then he shoots a power shot. But he maintains the distance after that. Big left hand by Griffin in response. Tarver steps back one step, goes back to work, takes another left hand. Jab, jab, jab for Tarver. Griffin's biggest problem is he can't get close enough. When he gets close enough, normally when Todd is punching, he can catch him. But other than that, he has a problem. And you saw Griffin almost step into a southpaw stance to try to create a better punching angle against Tarver. He moved his feet, but not his hands, and then came back around. Antonio Tarver, like Roy Jones, is from Florida. At 34, punches in front. He's a member of Jones's generation. But Jones doesn't call him. He calls everyone else but him. That's right. Doesn't have Tarver's number. <laughs> yeah, his phone doesn't work in Florida. <laughs> Jones, as we mentioned before the fight, has spoken to Griffin on the phone and. Given Griffin positive signals regarding the possibility of a third fight. Interesting. Looks like Tarver would be the bigger attraction. Oh, yeah, but I think it's a little personal thing there. It's a local problem. Duct tape on the shoe, man. Duct tape. Let's go duct tape. What's the tell you? You know why you're getting hit with that hook? You're standing too tall. Okay? He's timing you. Okay? Listen to me. Put your hands down. He's timing your jab. Okay? So now you got to stay low. Keep the jab working and work downstairs. Okay? Let's go, baby. Put your little closer to him. Okay? And in the process, you got to move that hair. Okay? Move that hair. You got to find sets, baby. You got to find sets. You throw one hook. Yeah. Where's two or three? Got to be in sets, boss. Okay. Okay? More action as Tarver tries to go to the body and Griffin with that big counter left yeah, upstairs. I, I think the fact that uh, Tarver wasn't even expecting anything back. He's so preoccupied now with offense. And with his offense, he's helping to limit Montel Griffin's offense straight. as Up Griffin is averaging only 24 punches around. 
partially because he's spending so much time on the defensive. You know, Tarver's jab doesn't look all that menacing when he just kind of lays it out there. But if he lays it out there over and over again, it occupies yeah, the so space. It, it, uh, and he's changing up. He issued a few paws, and then he had tightened up on one that's real hard. But the main thing is it's keeping Griffin at a distance, but dif distance can't really get set to punch effectively. Griffin steps in, dispenses with counter punching, leads with the left hook. Tarver gets a chance to land the combination in return. This is the problem for Griffin when he has to step forward and attack. Yes, he's going to have to yes. come through a hailstorm to get there. Yes, he's got to punch and step because he's so short and such so far away. If he just steps without punching, he steps right into Tarver's jab. <laughs> Fortunately, Tarver hasn't been shooting the counter left hands after he misses usually. If Tarver would do that, he would probably have hurt him a lot more. Tarver was criticized by coaches on the 1996 Olympic team who felt that he did not deliver a focused effort at the games in Atlanta. Really, this, this charge that Tarver lacks heart goes all the way back to those 96 Olympic games. Yes, it does. You know, but we're, now we're going to find out. He's in the pros. He's the top level of it now. I would love to see a fight with him and Roy Jones, too. In my view, Tarver's already lived that charge down. He showed me the heart when he decided to fight Harding again and knocked him out. Yes, he did. Straight left, lands on Griffin's face. Straight left, lands again. Montel Griffin still not finding a way to mount any consistent offense against Antonio Tarver. And Montel is very much in this fight. I understand he's really looking to try to land one big punch to turn this fight around. He has not given up hope. Right hand by Montel Griffin. Tarver comes back with a harder left. Griffin's trying to land one big shot that will get him in a position to throw combinations yeah, and maybe hurt Tarver, but he's still unable to throw more than one at a time. And Carver's keeping him right in that distance where he's, and he's got his body in such a strange angle, it's hard for Griffin to land a good solid blow. Time. Five rounds in the books between the light heavyweights, Montel Griffin and Antonio Tarver. Meanwhile, James Tony, former world champion at 160 and 168, prepares for what may be the biggest fight of the second half of Tony's career as he gets ready to go in tonight with his rejuvenated style and public image against the king of the cruiserweights, Vasily Giraff of Kazakhstan. Okay. Hey, look, you work six years for this, man. Right, Come right, on. Right. That's right. Let's, let's see some work, baby. Right, right, right. Let's see some work. Right from here, okay. you like the bullshit, fight. man. Right, okay. Get them hitting inside if you're not going to punch. Okay. 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 Okay, let's swallow that. Swallow that. Swallow that. We've got some Listen of the better me. cornermen in the sport the here tonight. Now what? We'll talk about that in a minute. Here's a big left hand by Tarver, Emmanuel. Yeah, but it seems like when he lands those punches, when Griffith can see them coming, even though they land clean, it doesn't affect him as much as when Griffith runs into punches. Keep it clean. Tarver has landed more ja jabs by CompuBox numbers, 36, than Griffin's total connects so far in the fight, which add to 28. You only land 28 punches in the first five rounds, and statistically, you're not getting it done. Tarver has already thrown 323 punches in the fight. There was something I was noticing, <laughs> Jim. The fighters have gloves to match their outfits tonight. Which looks pretty good, actually. <laughs> yeah. Tarver with the pewter to match his Tampa Bay Bucks ensemble. Everybody in his corner wearing a Tampa Bay Bucks ensemble. And Griffin with the green to match his beautifully tailored trunks. <laughs> Every little stylish element helps, Emmanuel. Yes. Get 
James Tony, of course, is old school. He don't want to wear the kind of gloves that Tony Zale and well, Rocky he, Graziano wore. He spent a lot of time with his earlier training in his career, Bill Miller, and watching a lot of the old fight films. Barber getting aggressive again. Griffin has taken some shots. Let him out. Step, step out, step out. Good job. against Chicago, Illinois. Montel Griffin. Griffin now lives in Las Vegas. Has for the past few years. A fixture at big fights, kind of like Chris Bird. Who's here tonight, incidentally, as always. Chris is a big fight fan. Chris is the biggest Chris fight fan big Chris. Fight fan. and fights this way, the farther and farther behind he will find himself on the scorecards. Yes, Tom is fighting a good fight. Everything is just the way he wants it to be. And right at the distance he wants it to be. Tarver needed a fast start and got it. You're fighting a guy who wants to counter. Go ahead and put him in jail on the scorecards so he can't win. And systematically, he's pulling the fight out. Okay, don't worry about that. This is what we got to do. This is what we got to do. You got to keep that jab working. You got to keep that jab working, Antonio. It's over. Listen to me. Listen to me. Keep the jab working. Listen to me. It's not over till it's over. Listen to me. Don't lose. Look at me, goddammit. Stay focused. You understand me? You understand me? Look at me. Do you understand? Okay? Yes, sir. Now, you, okay, yeah. you can't stop in front of this guy with one shot, okay? You got to take it all out of the set. Pull it all out. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got to go for it, baby. Yeah. yeah. Come on, man. You got to go for it. Right, right. You're running a little Okay. We got everything on. It happened right on the end, though. You got the wrestling? Just put it. Put it. Yeah. Okay. Look. Come on, Mr. Here. Second's out. In the corner. Second's out. Hey, let's go. There seems to be some problem in Griffith's corner. I noticed the regular athletic uh, inspector was there, but also the doctor's in the corner over there, too. Griffin trained by veteran Thel Torrance across the ring. The outstanding and pretty hot Muddy McGirt uh, has taken over Antonio uh, Tarver's career in the last couple of years. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim. 60 to 53. Six rounds to nothing. Antonio the Magic Man Tarver. Jim, I gotta tell you something. In round six, Antonio Tarver started a triple that right jab and starts throwing three punch combinations. I mean, up until now, basically it's been one shot at a time, but Tarver really picking up the offense by double and triple it up on his jab and there. thrown combinations. Is that a cut on Griffin's right eyelid, Emmanuel, or is he just swollen? I can't tell. I think it's swollen mostly. But uh, whatever it is, it's caused some problem, and it took quite a bit of time for them to let him come out for this round. If it's a cut, it is in a very dangerous place because yes. it's under the eyebrow, on the eyelid, in a place that could further yes. tear and behind would threaten Griffin's ability to finish the Walk fight. Behind the head, okay? Griffin's got some very good tournament in over there. In addition to Thiel, he's got Tommy Brooks, who also naturally one of the best fight guys, and also you got Kenny Kroon. Most of the guys are from the old Eddie Futch team. That's a very strong team. Yes, corner. very, very strong team over there. Of course, Buddy McGirt, training Tarver, has achieved a lot of cachet for... He's had a very, very good year and got a good prospect to work with on top of that. Been very busy and very sharp as a trainer this year. The one hiccup being, of course, that he trained Clifford ATN in his 49-second assignment against Mike Tyson, but privately, McGirt told several observers before that fight not to be looking for another McGirt miracle. Yeah. Again, the, the, uh, Griffin it, it, able to counter big. Yes, but the injured eye is beginning to have more of an effect. It's really bothering Griffin. And now Griffin getting more aggressive as he seems to realize that this eye is likely to shorten his tour of duty tonight. 
especially when the doctor realizes that a man is not one hardly around on a fight, probably is going to absorb just more punishment. It is bleeding. It does make it easy for a doctor to, to terminate a fight. There is bleed. There is blood now that's flowing out of the eyelid. It's flowing into Montel Griffin's right eye. Time. And Michael Ortega, I believe, is going to ask the ring doctor to look at it one more time. This cut is in a bad place. Secret now. Stay in the corner. It's it's Not now me. or never for Montel Griffin. Yes, it is. So whatever was Plan A, that has to go out the window now. But he's going to have to step it up right now. He cannot continue to set back. Not only was he losing the decision, but he's going to end up getting stopped on a technical knockout if he doesn't pick up the pace. throwing and landing a combination. This time Griffin yeah. misses the counter. Yeah, Tom is looking for the hook now. Step back clean. Time. It's the left cross of Antonio Tarver which has damaged Montel Griffin's right eyelid and threatens to knock Griffin out of the fight. Okay, so Keep it Stay in the corner. Stay in the corner here. You all set? Yes. Okay, stay right there. Stay right there. Ready? Fox. So the doctor who is now the key third figure in the fight is Michael Schwartz, ringside doctor. And in Montel Griffin's last round, round seven, he connected with 12 punches, his highest number of the fight. The Tarver landed 23 and remains the winner of the round on Harold Letterman's card, where so far Antonio Tarver has won every round. Winner to collect two light heavyweight championship belts stripped from Roy Jones after Jones' decision to stay in the heavyweight division, apparently to pursue a fight with Evander Holyfield in September. public is likely to still see Jones as the king of the light heavyweights until and unless he makes clear that he'll never fight there again. Yeah, well, I think it's clear to me. I'm quite sure Joy, Roy enjoyed being called heavyweight champion of the world, and it can be intoxicating after you hear that so long. So do you think he's a heavyweight to stay? <laughs> I think he'll stay at heavyweight. I don't think we'll ever see Roy Jones fight anything but heavyweight. Uh, eventually you may see him fight Lennox Lewis in another year or so. Hit. Don't hold him hit. That would be a risk. I think it's going to happen. I've, I've already told Lennox, let's get ready for Roy Jones because he's coming after you. Step out clean, step out clean. That means that the winner of this fight surveys the light heavyweight landscape as the number one guy. Oh, yes. yeah. Roy Jones is going there. You'll never see Roy Jones fighting as a light heavyweight anymore. Certainly the winner of our second fight between Giroff and Tony is likely to call out Roy Jones. If Tarver wins this fight, he's likely to call out Roy Jones. Oh, yes. Griffin is looking for a match with Roy Jones. I have not yet decided to fight Roy Jones, but I know there's money in it. <laughs> hey, Roy Jones got a lot of the small heavyweights. He's still got Chris Barrett up there. He's got the Holyfield. Uh, if James Tony wins, James can go back and start eating again and get back up to 200 Don't pounds. Don't hook him and hit him, okay? And I'll tell you again. Montel Griffin is big buddies with Chris Bird. And uh, he said he believes that his buddy Bird would, would beat Roy Jones. James Tony's even more adamant about it. He says, oh, Chris Bird would tear Jones up. But, of course, Tony has no particular love or respect for Jones. 
I think if it's all said and done, pretty much just as George Foreman said, Roy's going to decide to step up. And if I'm going to be heavyweight champion, well, I'm going to fight the super heavyweight champion and end up fighting Lennox Lewis. Barber with a three-punch combination landing again. Just not letting Griffin get into a position to command any offensive shot. Hey, let him out. Let him out. Get back. And now Griffin's left eye hey, is beginning back. to swell as well. Yeah, and he's got a cut on his left eye also. Some of this is because Tarver, from his height, punches down at Montel. Very effectively, too. May 3 on HBO pay-per-view. It's the return of Oscar De La Hoya following his knockout of longtime nemesis Fernando Vargas. De La, De La Hoya looks to defend his 154-pound crown against veteran puncher Yori Boy Campus. Also that night, featherweight title holder Eric Morales, looking toward a possible third fight with Marco Antonio Barrera, takes on Bobby Boy Velardis, Fernando Bobby Boy Velardis of Southern California. HBO Boxing, for 30 years, building legends one round at a time. And between fights, we'll talk to living legend Oscar De La Hoya about the campus fight, about the possible fight with Shane Mosley in the fall, and about the reconstruction of his career since his loss to Mosley three years ago. Oscar having a little fun with the camera. Shows a certain relaxation with his public figure role, huh? Oh, yes. He's back on top of the world. In the last two rounds, when Montel Griffin knew that he had to step up the pace to try to stay in the fight against Antonio Tarver with his eye being examined constantly by the ring doctor, Griffin still has landed only 15 punches, whereas Tarver has landed 36. Mont Montel Griffin facing a tactical disadvantage against the taller, longer, sharp Antonio Tarver. Break them up. No, no, no. Okay, easy on the rough stuff. Don't push them. The last big hitting southpaw in this division was Michael Moore when he yeah. was on his way to becoming cruiserweight titleist and then ultimately no. the heavyweight champion. He never fought as a cruiserweight. Oh, that's right. He skipped through the cruiserweight division. Straight, that's straight right. from light heavyweight to heavyweight. Um, how does Tarver as a southpaw compare to uh, Moore, who was your guy in that day? Let him out. Let him out. No comparison. I mean, no comparison. Moore was Mike, a harder Mike, hitter. Michael Moore was a much harder player. It was physically, I think, uh, bigger all the way around. A totally different style of fighter. A stronger, heavier guy. Much stronger. He normally walked around at 210 pounds when he was a light heavyweight. Tarver is more of an elongated athlete type. But Tarver is letting Griffin get closer to him. I've noticed it seems like he slowed down a lot, and Griffin is getting a lot closer to him now. It's fortunate enough Griffin has tired himself, but Tarver is not as elusive. He's expended a lot of energy in the first eight rounds see of the that? fight. Let's, let's see that he's getting hit. That's right, and he gets rocked by a left hook, and that's the yes. first time that Tarver wobbled backward on his feet after being hit by Griffin's hook. Griffin is barely missing with a lot of the short right hands in there now. No, no, no. No knockdown. No knockdown. And Tarver with a Derek Brooks tackle there in his uh, Tampa Bay Bucks <laughs> trunks. Fox. Let him out, let him out. Griffin is getting much, much closer with his right hand now. Blood begins to trickle again from Griffin's right eyelid. Sometimes, if you're in Tarver's position, you start to try to target the eye, and the other elements of your game go away. Griffin's legs are gone now. A lot of those slips and fall downs are mainly because his legs are just gone. Big left hook by Griffin, backs Tarver up again. Tarver got walloped on the chin by Griffin's left hook. Tarver chopping with the jab. Good Trying jab, to reestablish good, good, space. Good jab, good jab, good jab. And when, when, when Griffin throws the left hook down, similarly Tarver has learned to angle his body at a way where, even though it may look good to the public, it doesn't affect him that much because he angles his body back. A... Body shot by Tarver. More of those would be useful as he tries to wear Griffin nine. down further with 9 out of 12 in the book. Tenth round upcoming, Vasily Giroff getting closer to the biggest assignment of his professional career. 1996 Olympic gold medalist in Atlanta. Winner of the Val Barker Trophy is the outstanding boxer in those games. Impeccable amateur pedigree. Unbeaten professional career. All on the line tonight against the best fighter he's ever fought, James Tony.
got me. I'm over here. Can we go nine minutes, sir? Can Antonio go nine minutes? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go. Just like in the gym. Stay low and let's let your hands go. Okay. You can wrestle all day tomorrow, baby. Okay. Okay, tomorrow you wrestle with them belts. Okay. You understand me? Don't. It's your life. Right. Let's go. Got, if, you hit, if you throw three punches, you're going to hit him with one hook. Right. You're throwing one hook at a time. You got to go for broke, Cal. Yeah, right. The guy's tired. Second time. Second time. Antonio Tarver. Tarver turned professional at 28, which is bizarre. Usually, that's the case for guys who are brought to boxing late. Tarver actually had an elongated amateur career. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Right okay, Jim. 90 to 80, nine rounds to nothing, Antonio the Magic Man Tarver. Jim, I just think he's doing too much in each and every round, getting in too many good shots, doubling and tripling with that right jab, and, 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 and you know, drawing nice combinations. The, in the last round, Montel Griffin was bleeding from the mouth as well, so he's probably cut over both eyes and in the mouth. I mean, Montel really has to pick this up and land some shots. It's Antonio Tarver based on clean, effective punching. And one last thing. I don't know why they don't pull his trunks up. But if you were looking for a round to give to Griffin, the ninth would have been it. Because that's, that's the first round in which, by copy box numbers, Griffin outlanded Tarver, 8-7. to seven, And Griffin's uh, offense lowered Tarver's punch output in the ninth. With only 37 punches, by far his lowest output in the fight. So Antonio slowed down a little bit. It remains to be seen whether Montel can take advantage of the opportunity. I don't think Montel has enough left, and he's not a big puncher. But anything can happen. But right now, I think Tarver is fighting him a little closer. Tarver should get his distance again and start establishing his right jab because it was working very effectively. At this point, Tarver would have to make a mistake in all likelihood for Griffin to win the fight. But, but that's not out of the question. No, it's not out of the question. It could, it could happen. We've seen it many times. Tarver continues here to throw fewer punches in this round than has been the case through most of the fight. He's only thrown and that's 17 that punches. And he needs to keep the fight at that distance where he can punch effectively. And get back to using his right jab. When he uses the jab, he keeps gripping away and on the defensive. Tarver needs to go back to being busy with the jab so that Griffin doesn't get these opportunities to leap at him with left hooks. And Griffin have to use his legs because his legs are gone. Now another burst of energy from Antonio Tarver. In case you just joined us, Tarver knocked Griffin down at the end of the first round. Thoroughly dominated him in the early rounds. Has cut Griffin's eye, right eye, on the eyelid. And generally has won. Round after round after round. But the brave Montel Griffin is still there, still trying to find a way to turn the tide with one big punch and give Tarver a loss he would regret for a long time. Ten seconds. Boxing science going out the window now for Griffin. He just wants to find a way to get some leather on Tarver. Time. They're tired. So then let's go ahead and fight like a champion. So listen, we got six minutes. Listen to me. Look at me. We got six minutes. You're losing focus, Antonio. Okay? Don't let him get nothing off. Okay? Even though he's not hurting you, don't take those shots. Stay low. Stay low and just walk to him. He's a dead man. You understand me? He's got no legs. Don't look for the knockout. Just walk to him. Stay low. You can see everything coming. Okay. Only time. Time. Look alive. This is the, like this is the last round. Okay. Right. Mark's the guy like it's the last round. Okay. I'm okay. That's it. That's it. Okay. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on. You got nice man out. Yeah. Okay. When it, it, ain't no yeah. decision. All right. Okay. All right. Ain't lying to you, baby. Yeah. 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 You got nice man. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You got it all in the corner, guys. Right. Right. Okay. You got it. You got it right okay. here. <laughs> Tim Griffin is listed as the cut man in Montel Griffin's corner, but I think Phil Torrance is the man who's done most of the work in keeping that right eyelid under control. Yeah, they've coagulated to bleeding very good. It, uh, it, it hasn't been that big of a problem. I think the biggest problem is just Montel's legs are going on. 
See, that's once again, and, and, and he could very easily get knocked down, uh, knocked out now simply because his legs is, is, is bad. Right hand lands for Griffin. You heard Buddy McGirt urging Tarver to regain his focus and simply not to allow Griffin to do the kinds of things he's done in the last three rounds. Tarver should step back and let Griffin miss completely. That way he'd make him use his legs and want to sort of bend him into the punches now. They trade in the center of the ring, and Griffin is the one who's hurt. Now Tarver is knocked backward by a left hand. Tarver trading his feet into a right-handed stance to try to get at Griffin along the ropes. Now back into his southpaw position. Griffin in a little flat spot again as Tarver backs him in the corner. Tarver has never at any point in time in his fight felt, I think, uh, in fear of the punching power of Griffin. Even when he's gotten hit, it seems like he does have no respect at all for Griffin's punching power. Well, fighters at the top of the division wouldn't be all that afraid. Punching power simply isn't Montel Griffin's game. No. In his 44 wins, he has 29 KOs. And now the blood is streaming pretty freely from the cut above Griffin's right eye, and he begins to paw at it with his left glove. It's going to make it harder and harder for Griffin to concentrate on trying to get at Tarver. As long as Tarver keeps him right there and fights him at that distance, he's going to have complete control and still may end up getting a stoppage. Tarver seems to be trying to mix aggression with safety first. Yes. But I, I tell you, I will say this much, though. If Griffin is a little bit younger and a little better legs on him and a little bit more punching power, Tarver might be in trouble. But because, he's not. Because he's being very hittable now. But it's just unfortunate that Griffin is just a little bit too slow. The height disadvantage doesn't help either. No, it doesn't. Griffin steps into a southpaw stance to try to create an angle for the left hand against Tarver. And Tarver throws him off as Dr. Michael Schwartz is going to be brought in to look at the cut one more time. And the doctor lets Griffin keep going again. this time. That's it. Listen to me. Put your arms down. Put your legs out. Put your legs out. Okay, now listen to me. Three minutes, he's champion of the world. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now listen to me. He's going to get desperate. Don't look for the knockout. But do me a favor. Yes, sir. Close the show like a champion. Okay. Three. Sword, no point. Can you make, can you make it through this yeah. round? Oh, yeah. Can you make it round? Okay. Well, I want you to look around. You got you got a... I got it. Okay. Okay. Now listen. Yeah. 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 Just right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now listen. Last round. Touch him up. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. Don't worry about the eye. Hit him with the left hand here. Jab his arm. Let's close the show like you finished. Like you started. Look at me. Champion of the world. Three minutes. Stand up. Stand up. Show me your champion. Let's go. Go to this man and throw punches. All right. Look. Go out there. Last round, touch him up. Last round, touch him up. Right, round. Keep it clean. Let's go. Antonio Tarver and Montel Griffin fighting in the light heavyweight division vacated by Roy Jones, who held all three title belts, was the undisputed champion, but has moved up to heavyweight. Tarver has controlled the fight most of the way. Griffin can be expected to launch one last stand here. Harold, how do you have it through 11? Half gauge in 11 to nothing, 110, 98. Antonio Tarver. Jim, he's winning it out. All the four points that we score on, definitely clean punching, definitely effective aggression. This has been the aggressive the whole fight. Ring generalship, he's keeping the guy at the right distance. 50 punch, Montel's not getting through. Big left hand.
10 by Tarver, who seems to want to finish with a knockout, Amanda. Tarver's going out trying for a knockout, and I don't know if he's going to get it or not, but it's turned out to be a much better fight than I have expected. What do you think of the tactic of going for a knockout when you might have won every round? Well, that's a third bitch. You know, I, I love knockouts all the time myself. But uh, I, I don't think there's going to be a knockout in the fight here. But if you were Tarver's trainer, you wouldn't be nervous that he's going at Griffin no, this way? No, I don't, I don't think Griffin is that big a puncher. Let's go. I agree. I think that it's been Tarver's best strategy to be aggressive, be offensive, and back Griffin up. That's what he ought to try to do here because it's one in the fight up to this point. Yeah, and even when, when Griffin does punch, his punches come from such a lunge that he really doesn't have his feet set solid. Break. Let him out. Let him out. And everything Montel has been able to do in the fight has come one punch at a time. Yeah. He'll seldom beat a good fighter one no. punch at a time. No, and Tarver keeps his body angles very good where it's very difficult to put two or three punches on him. Let him out. Let him out. Well, Tarver's fought a lot of the best flight heavyweights now. He knocked out Harding. He beat Reggie Johnson decisively. He will have beaten Griffin if he gets the expected result in this fight. He's talked about fighting Darius Mikulszewski, but says that he would not go to Germany to fight Mikulszewski, and you agree that's the right position. I, I don't see no reasons for anyone to go to Germany to fight Mikulszewski. They've got all of the championships over here, and, uh, and this is a neutral ground over here for the most part. And I agree with Roy Jones, too, 100% for not going over there. Griffin comes in, Montel, who takes a shot pretty well, keeps on coming. Griffin recovered from the first round knockdown and has tried as he could to deal with his tactical disadvantage and a the eats a straight left hand with 20 seconds to go. It's very hard for a guy to be tired and exhausted to get up like what, if, what, if I'm not mistaken, I saw Tarver actually step on his feet when he hit him. If he hadn't did that, I don't think he would have went down. And Tarver, smiling for the first time in the fight, comes forward to try to finish Griffin, but the bell ends the fight. Big time performance and for Antonio Tarver. He dominated the great, 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 great performance for him. He's become a heck of a fighter. Bucking the tide of criticism that has surrounded a lot of his career. And a further feather in the cap for Buddy McGurk. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the knockdown as the doctors are now examining Griffin and trying to limit the damage to the right eyelid, which will no doubt be treated in a hospital later tonight. Big left yeah. hand, and he was he just he, ate it. But they didn't show. He, he actually stepped on his feet at the same time. He not that it was on purpose, but I saw it. Because yeah, it doesn't show right here. And that's why he's trying to hold his balance right here. Might have gone down anyway, man. He was tired anyway. It was just a matter of time. And this was one of the better clean shots that Tarver got in in the whole yeah. fight. Perfect shot. There was no doubt about the outcome anyway. Now there's less. What a wipeout. Harold Letterman gives every single round to Antonio Tarver, and with the two point rounds in both the first and the 12th, 120 to 106. I'm not sure when I've seen that lopsided the score. And, and Griffin was still competitive all the way, but he just totally outclassed. But he was always trying to fight and trying to win. Well, let's see how the three official judges saw it as we go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant IBF and WBC light heavyweight titles, we go to the scorecards. George Smith scores the contest 120 to 106. That's the same score from judges Steve Epstein and John Lawson, all scoring at 120 to 106 for the winner by unanimous decision. He is now the champion, Antonio the Magic Man. Takes over through two, two of the three light heavyweight championship belts, which have been stripped from Roy Jones after Jones's official defection to the light heavyweight division. And on the basis of this fight, Tarver for the moment becomes the American king of the light heavyweights. He landed 105 more punches than Griffin. 
He threw 329 more punches than Griffin. He landed at a higher percentage. You saw the final score that Harold Letterman put together, which was a huge wipeout. He landed 56 more jabs than Griffin. He threw 316 more jabs than Griffin. And all in all, it was an extremely effective performance for Antonio Tarver, who now joins us on camera, festooned with all sorts of title belts. You, you look like Roy Jones with this uh, belt obsession here. Congratulations on what was a very good performance from start to finish. Um, after you knocked him down at the end of round one, you've got the counter puncher in the position of having to come to you. Did you just figure you'd dominate him with the jab the rest of the way? I'd first like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for making all this possible. It took so long to get here. Yes, I, I'm so happy that I trained as hard and as determined as I did because anything less than that tonight would have surely ended in defeat. Montel Griffin is a great champion. I take my hat off to him, and I'm just glad I wanted this as bad as he did. You talk about how badly you wanted this. You know as well as the rest of us do, going all the way back to your Olympic appearance in 1996, your career has been hounded by criticism, which will now be seen by most as unwarranted. Even Griffin said coming into the fight that he wanted to test your heart. Is it doubly satisfying to you to have gotten to where you've gotten, given what you know people have said about you? Oh, yeah, that's the mo all the motivation I need. I've never in my life been a quitter. I've overcame so many adversities in life, and I know that nothing man can do to stop me if I set my mind to it and I want to just say that it's my motto believe in yourself follow your dreams they do come true I'm a perfect example of that let's take a look at the uh, last knockdown in the fight as the straight left hand in the 12th round put Griffin on the seat of his pants were you thinking well if I get at him one more time I can finish this with a KO well I was listening to my great trainer Buddy McGirt and you're always you always have to be in the fight mentally and physically you can't let up for not one second and that goes to show you uh, if I would have got a little bit more uh, right on a kisser he could have been out before the 12th round uh, end it. You're the king of the light heavyweights now from uh, this position. What are your future plans? Well, I just want to take this victory, relish it, go home with my family and enjoy it. And uh, anything goes with me, Antonio Tarver. Uh, I've never ducked anyone. I took the gigantic risk that most fighters today don't take. I'm just ready for whatever, whoever and uh, however. Antonio Tarver is here and I'm here to stay. All right. Congratulations, Antonio, on a great performance. Thank you. Antonio Tarver, light heavyweight champion of the world, and uh, Emmanuel, in addition to everything else, he's a well-spoken guy and quite presentable. What about Antonio's performance and where he stands in the sport now? I thought it was a great performance. He fought a very smart fight, kept the fight at the distance that he wanted that, and it, it never did give in. Even when he got hit, you know, it never got rattled. He seemed to be very focused, very impressive. I would have liked to saw him and Roy Jones fight as light heavyweights, but I don't think that will happen unless he gets a little bigger because I don't think Roy is coming down. All right. Still to come tonight, we'll go just a little bit further up the scale, 15 pounds to be accurate, to look at world cruiserweight champion Vasily Jirov, called the Russian Tiger, although he's actually from Kazakhstan, facing off against the toughest opponent of his career, rejuvenated former middleweight and super middleweight superstar James Tony, who says he's willing to go all the way up to heavyweight if he can beat Jirov and take on anyone, everyone. Meanwhile, mark your calendars for these upcoming shows.